Donna, Hello. nice to see you. Hello. Thank nice you for coming. You. It's nice to be here. Okay, let's uh, let's get started. We've got a lot on our agenda tonight. My name is David Victor, and I'm a chair of the Community Engagement Panel. Today is the November 21st to Thursday, and we have our fourth quarter meeting, fourth quarter regular meeting of the of the panel. A word on safety before we before we begin. Uh, should you need to exit the building, there are emergency exits in two places. Uh, uh, out the way you came in, so down that hallway. Um, out the side doors here, where it says exit, there's actually a third set of exits right behind us, behind this uh, behind this uh, curtain here. Uh, we have tonight uh, Oceanside Police Department. Uh, they're here for everyone's safety, and I want to thank you for your service to the Oceanside uh, Police Department. I want to thank the CEP members who are here with us tonight. Um, we have uh, Doug Woodyard. Is Doug here right now? Well, Doug Woodyard will be uh, will be sitting in uh, for uh, for Lisa Bartlett, who's chairwoman of the Orange County Board of Supervisors. He, he's chief of staff in that in that office. The um, agenda for tonight is up on the screen. Uh, it's pretty hard to see because we've got a huge amount of stuff to cover tonight. There are copies of the agenda, I think, on everyone's, uh, everyone's seat. There are two major themes that we're going to be covering uh, tonight. One theme is around uh, dismantling and removing the plant, uh, which is going to begin uh, early next year. For the last 15 months, this panel has been focused on the same question that Edison has been focused on, which is the suspension and then restart of fuel transfer operations. That's been fitting and proper. Now we need to focus, um, as we will in this meeting, on what the process of dismantlement actually looks like, what to expect. We'll be meeting uh, some of the people who are involved with that. The second topic we'll be uh, discussing tonight are the efforts that are, that are being undertaken to get the spent fuel off-site. These are both technical, political, legislative in nature, and we'll be spending some time on that. As always, really appreciate uh, expert third parties who have joined us here at the CEP. We have a lot of them. In fact, so many tonight that we have two rows. We have some sitting up here and some sitting up in the front of the audience. Uh, so here tonight to discuss dismantlement will be Tom Dieter and Bob Corbett uh, from Songs Decommissioning Solutions. That's the company that is a specialist in this area and is working on similar projects in other parts of the country. Uh, here to discuss the uh, efforts to relocate spent fuel off-site our folks working on that effort. Uh, in particular, we have with us uh, tonight uh, Tom Isaacs, who's chair of the Songs Expert Team, who's sitting down at the end of the uh, panel here. And then from the Northwind team, we heard about the Northwind effort um, uh, uh, last meeting, and we have three members of the Northwind uh, team here with us tonight who will be speaking. Uh, Phil Neg Negleski Eichner, am I close enough? That's good. That's close enough? Okay, well, you're very diplomatic, so thank you for that. Um, uh, Brian Gutherman and Joe Heiser uh, will all be speaking to us uh, later later tonight. And in addition, we have an additional guest tonight from the Nuclear Waste Technical Review Board, uh, Brett Leslie, who's here. And Brett will be giving us a short presentation because the work of that board has been in the news in a variety of ways. And we thought it would be helpful to have Brett come and talk about what the board does, what it doesn't do, and what it's... Um, uh, what it is, has, has found. I want to just remind everybody that if you would like to, we have a whole hour, the third hour. I feel a little bit like we're introducing a reality TV show here, but uh, we have the third hour tonight is uh, going to be facilitated public comment. If you would like to make a comment, please fill out a card. Uh, they were on the table as you came in. So grab a card, fill it out. We'll get you on the agenda. Um, uh, I want to remind everybody that the CEP is a two-way conduit between the communities that are affected by the decommissioning process and the and Edison, which is operating the decommissioning process along with its, uh, its subcontractors. It is not a decision-making body. We say that at every meeting. Uh, I think it's important to continue to underscore. Um, there are information booths available as you came in. They'll be available during the break. Uh, meeting materials for tonight, there's a slide deck, a rather hefty slide deck that was shared with the CEP last week and posted to the website. The agendas and supplemental uh, newsletter are on your chairs. And reminder to help our court reporter uh, to anyone as they want to take the floor. Panelists, please tell us what your name is 
um, and that way people can know um, who you are, the folks watching at home on live stream, and also for our transcript from tonight. And if you want to get the floor, please just put your tent card up sideways like that, and um, and uh, we'll give you the floor. Uh, Doug Bowder, before we begin, is, uh, would you like to say anything uh, by way of initial comments? Sure. Thank. Sure. Thank you, David, and. Uh Welcome to all of you who have showed up for the meeting. We really appreciate it. Um, for this meeting, we actually are serving pizza and some other refreshments, so please take advantage of that if you have not already. We also have full bottles of water, not the half bottles, based on feedback from other meetings, so please grab a bottle of water too as well. And just like last meeting, <clears throat> for this meeting, we're, some of the presenters are focusing on the work at hand that they oversee and that they're directly involved in. And we started that process last meeting and we'll continue that through these meetings so you can hear firsthand from those who are involved with the work. And some of those presentations get into some level of detail tonight. Regarding fuel transfer, we will give you an update. I want to also remind you that we are posting updates on our Songs Community website about monthly on our fuel transfer situation at, at, at San Onofre and how we're doing that safely and some of the lessons we're learning through that process. It's a large project. And then we'll lean forward a little bit into the decommissioning effort and then um, have a good discussion around moving the fuel uh, off, of, off of the site and our readiness for that. So once again, thanks, Dave. Okay, thank you very much. Um, before we he get an update uh, on where we are with the decommissioning process, we have a few general community updates um, let me mention, I think this is the only slide on that. No, okay, oh, look at that, we have two slides here. So I just want to mention that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has been doing a listening tour, and we were one of the stops on their listening tour in late August. Um, they asked in advance, and the question in front of them, as mandated by Congress, is what are the best practices around community engagement? One of the things that's emerged very clearly from that is that there are a lot of different ways of doing community engagement. That was something we underscored. Uh, and so uh, they will be reporting on their listening tour in, I think, the first quarter of next year. Uh, to, as a contribution to that process, uh, lots of different groups were asked to fill out a questionnaire. We did. In fact, uh, the CEP leadership, along with Edison, filled out a questionnaire with lots of different questions about what we've learned in this process of community engagement. That questionnaire is on songscommunity.com. And then I also testified uh, around what I think we've learned from the process, and my testimony in written form is also on songscommunity.com. So we wish the NRC well in doing that. Uh, we also, I think the main message I left with them is be careful about finding single solutions when there are in fact multiple solutions and it as befits the diversity in the American democracy um, at all, so many different states. Second thing I want to mention very briefly is the uh, CEP leadership, and Tom Isaacs joined us as well, um, spent a day uh, in September in New Jersey. Um, September in New Jersey is hot. Uh, we spent the day at the Holtec facility. There's an aerial view of it. As everyone knows, there's been some tension between uh, Holtec and the CEP leadership around this issue of taking seriously the fuel transfer uh, operations. Uh, we were concerned that um, that the management uh, attention and oversight to that process wasn't where it needed to be back when the incident happened a year ago, August. And uh, there's been a lot of discussions with them, and we thought it was very important to go spend the day at the Holtec facility. Um, I want to make just three brief comments by way of observation and see if the other CP, other folks who were on that trip um, have additional comments. Uh, the first is that the facility actually is an amazingly impressive facility. So this is manufacturing is coming back in America. And here's a facility um, that has been built in New Jersey, state-of-the-art uh, manufacturing facility. And that was quite apart from the main purpose of the visit. Very impressive to see uh, an impressive part of the American industrial economy. Second thing, the entire s leadership of that company spent the entire day with us. I think that's very important and a very important signal uh, that they were trying to send to us about the seriousness uh, that they are taking the fuel transfer operations. And we had a frank, con frank conversations about the need for nuclear excellence in that process. And that leads to my third observation, which is you never really know in a privately held company exactly what's going on, and they have a lot of new things that they're working on. All of that I understand completely. But I think all of us were impressed by the, by the all of the signals 
which pointed in the same direction, which is that they understand that they have to have nuclear excellence in the fuel transfer operations. They understand the failures that, ha that led to the August incident. Uh, Edison understands that as well. And um, these two organizations are very focused on making sure that is done to a very high standard of excellence. So those are my main takeaways from what was a, a full day and a very important set of discussions. Let me pause for just a moment and see Dan or Jerry or, or others if you have additional comments about that. Sure. Thank you, David. Yes, just to add to that, I think one important takeaway for me was the lessons learned at Songs about everything that's been going on here was a strong commitment to take all those lessons learned and to make sure that they are fully implemented at the other sites that uh, the whole tech is going to be operating on. The second uh, piece actually refers to the public meetings. I attended both of those. One of those had to do with uh, the re restart for the transfer of fuel, and the other one had to do with suggestions from the public. And of course, one of the suggestions, as Doug mentioned, is uh, a better food and water here. Uh, but one of the comments that I wanted to address at one of the meetings was that they were concerned by members of the public that our peace officers, our policemen, were a little too aggressive uh, here. And I really want to take issue with that in that they're really here uh, for our own protection. I mean, every day we pick up the paper, listen to the news about an unfortunate shooting incident. In fact, I have a personal, uh, when I was the president of the Ocean Institute, uh, we had a gunman come on the campus. We had over 100 children on site. Uh, we had to evacuate them. We had swarms of police officers come on site and lock the place down. Um, fortunately, all the children were safe. There was one fatality, that was the gunman, but it's really because of the great work to our police officers. After something that like that happens, uh, you're never the same, but you're forever grateful for the great work of our police officers. Great. Thank you very much. No other comments about this, um, these updates. Um, I want to give the floor now to Dan and Jerry. Uh, at the last meeting, as is typical of all of our meetings, a lot of questions come up. We are building more time into the agenda to answer more questions that night, but not all the answers were provided that night, and so I want to ask you guys to give us an update on where we are in summarizing all the main questions and getting answers for those. You want to start? Uh, thank you, David. As you know, a number of the questions were unable to answer at the meetings, and many of them require more in-depth answers than we're able to provide here at the meetings. So Songs, uh, Southern California Edison is now, you can see here, uh, posted the more in-depth answers to the questions. You can just go onto the website, and uh, these are the individual links to those questions that have came, come up at the last question. Everything from information about the double wall canisters to risk-driven inspections, all the information is there, and it, the goal is to make it as complete and as transparent as possible. So just go onto the website, and it's there. And the only other thing I, I want to kind of add to that, this spring we're going to have a workshop on long-term management of the canisters. Uh, we have a, an organizational meeting tomorrow that we're going to bring forward in, in the spring, a, a general um, update about the long-term management of those canisters over a period of time. So I, I don't know exactly what we're going to call it yet as far as the meeting goes, but we're going to look at what real um, threats are available or that will happen over a long period of time with the canisters sitting that close to the beach if we cannot get uh, the federal government to move forward and, and move it. Okay. And it will be about the threats, whole range of threats. It will be around the potential consequences and about remedies. Um, and so we have a, the second of the planning meetings. That, as everyone or as many of you know, was a process that was underway more than a year ago and then because of events over the last 15 months we've been focused on other things. We are committed, the community asked for this, uh, for the CEP to put this meeting together, and so we are committed to, to delivering that, and tomorrow will we'll help us get back on track. Uh, okay, any other general updates before we move on to the main parts of the, of the meeting?